All right, guys, it's Ozzy Grimm with the Gamers Grimm coming back with another video for the first time on YouTube in a very long time. Uh, just a quick update. Um, some of the personal issues uh, that took me off of YouTube a couple of years ago or have come to an end, and it looks like I'm going to be trying to make YouTube videos again. So, uh, Hopefully you guys will enjoy this content. Um, as you can see, we're in Valheim uh, on my very special server uh, here at the uh, crossroads between the cities. Um, I've spent the last couple of years building on this uh, Adventure Time server, uh, whereas some people build uh, buildings and maybe a, a town or two. I decided to build an entire kingdom across an entire island, uh, complete with multiple cities. Uh, many of the cities are getting pretty close to being done. I'm going to start working on some of the smaller villages which have been started. Uh, but we are here at the crossroads and we are going to go to my Iron Forge, my World of Warcraft uh, inspired build inspired by Iron Forge or Tol Barad, if you will, uh, called Tears Guard. And uh, so, uh, as you can see, most of the uh, cities are connected by roads. You can travel between them on foot and follow the roads, but uh, this is going to be the first uh, walkthrough tour of the first completed city. And so I've got on uh, some of the dev commands to make it a little easier for us. But we're going to follow the road through the woods here, headed towards the mountain. And uh, we're going to take a, a nice tour. Here's the portal from the main hub where I work from. And let you know that uh, there's also a lake town and a bald rock builds that are underway. Um, so I'm going to eat some food real quick, get my stamina up a little bit, and we're going to look at the ground because we don't want to give it away too soon. But there is a little block down here uh, where we can get the best view of the city when we first look up uh, at the right time of the day and get a nice panoramic of this mega build that I've done. So here we go. Here is Tirisgard, the city in the mountain. And uh, since I don't really know how to use the uh, editing tools like some of the other builders, uh, I don't know how to like move terrain or manipulate the terrain. This is uh, just a this is just a build made within the normal uh, build parameters. And yes, it took a lot of work, and it took a lot of time, and a lot of jumping, and a lot of scaffolding, but we uh, we got it done, and it encompasses the entire mountain itself, all the way up to the peak, um, along with defensive walls and turrets, and it is a fully functioning city. It's not just decorative. Uh, there's homes and apartments, businesses, and pretty sure most of them are all decorated and taken care of. Uh, we might find a few that aren't uh, complete like they're supposed to be, but I'm almost certain that I'm completely done with this city. I'm not going to do any more work on the Iron Forge build, the city of Tirisgard. We're going to walk across the, the main uh, bridge that crosses over this river and head up in through the main gate and go down the main thoroughfare or the main lower city another wow reference but uh, we'll come out here into the trade district of the lower city you'll see we have the lower city pawn shop with uh, storage for people and money to be loaned out and uh, we'll see the trade district apartments the entire uh, main wall facility is is accommodated with living and this is the uh, upper commerce district is up in this fortress area here but we'll be going through there here shortly we're going to go along lower city and see mountainous appetites 
and by the skin and teeth fur trading. And we're going to have another entrance into the East End Apartments. And uh, we'll go up here to this first battle turret that uh, the city guard can utilize for them to watch over the city. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to the lower road, which is uh, where I think most of the city guard would spend their time. But this is the lower road of, of the Tears Guard City. You can see that uh, we have uh, housing and barrack space for some of the city guard here in this first watchtower that comes along this road. Be able to overlook the, the forest here and look down upon the uh, entrance to the city. <clears throat> we'll come through here to the second tower where you can see that there is a, a murder hole that overlooks the main gate. No good citadel is complete without a murder hole. We'll go to the next guard tower, which again is more barrack space for city guards. Uh, and then some seating here. And we'll come up the side of the city here where you have the, the gate that leads out towards Portsmouth. And this road will take you to Portsmouth, which is a build that's underway, but not ready to be shown. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me. We'll head up through here, through the main gate, and we'll come back up onto the lower city road. And, of course, you'll see the entrance here to some more uh, the West End apartments. But uh, we'll go ahead and look over here. This, of course, is the West End Tavern. And then there's the West End Pavilion that overlooks the, the gate to the forest. And, of course, we have a tavern. No good dwarven city would uh, be complete without a tavern. And so we'll head back out and we'll travel along the battlements here as we see uh, some of the stairs that will take you up to the upper road, which is where a lot of the living quarters are. This is a Bwad's Twaiting Post. It's a friend of mine who often comes in and looks at uh, my builds. He's a good friend of mine. And uh, we'll travel along the battlements here. We'll see the uh, main citadel here that climbs up the mountain to the High Thanes quarters. We'll come back through to the trade district all along. You can see I've sort of cleverly hidden the, the chimneys of the uh, various apartments contained within the main wall. So we'll head down into the East End Apartments and check out some of the, uh, the apartments that I've built down here under the, under the ground. Uh, this is where uh, I call, this is the one I call my house. It's a nice uh, sort of condominium sized dwarf apartment. And then we'll head back down to the next apartments a little bit lower down in the wall. And then we'll head back up. head past the, the merchants here and then of course we've got the uh, trade district apartments which you can access through here and I think there's three or four apartments down here modestly sized uh, fully decorated and accommodated for people to live in and then an apartment here you know all of the chimneys are functional they don't uh, smoke you out. They've got all ventilation built in through the walls. Uh, it's a nice apartment there. We'll head back up to the lower city road for the main trade district road. And we'll go take a look at the uh, next set of apartments. I think these are sort of going from east to west. We go with size and pricing. These are sort of the middle, middle of the road, a little smaller, but still as cozy and as comfortable as any of the other apartments and when we get to the west side we'll see what i think of as sort of the more economy uh living quarters that can be taken up residence in the uh in the lower city change the animation on the uh ladder climbing it's a little awkward now but it wasn't like it was super comfortable before but <laughs> makes it look a little bit different. So these are the smaller like economy apartments that uh, people can take up residence in. 
in the lower city, of course. And uh, so, yeah, that's the, the lower city as it is. We can take a peek into the trading, the trading post that uh, was named after my friend. You know, it's got, uh, you know, of course, plenty of goods to be traded, a nice desk, and it's well lit. Uh, as you can see, I, I've used some of the newer stuff, but most of this build was done before Mistlands. So you won't see a lot of the Mistlands materials being utilized in it. Um, and a big chunk of it was done before even Hearth and Home came out. So uh, I was able to use Hearth and Home decorations and some of the materials that came there. And you might occasionally see some uh, Mistlands items that were used because I thought they were really nice. I, I had made these other kinds of street lamps that were sort of ad hoc by my own design but these are much nicer and I think they look a lot better al along the road so let's uh, head up through the main citadel into where I assume the bulk of the military forces for the city would live and uh, where the high thane or the leader of the city would take up residence of course we have uh, a barracks area here to house multiple soldiers and uh, guardsmen We'll head up to the next level, the Citadel, which would be the uh, mess area, both for the soldiers and uh, the upper deck there would be like officers' dining area, of course, uh, an armory and storage area for the guards. We'll see the uh, officers' eating dining area and, of course, uh, the mess area itself within the uh, Citadel. And if we go up, we'll see the first major platform in the citadel that you can use to overlook the city uh, looking down above on everything this is sort of where the soldiers would hang out uh, there's a, a pathway of course down into the trade districts as well as a path up through to the high things quarters itself from here uh, if you go over here there's also another path that can be taken to the, the to the high road and some of the other housing areas along the side of the mountain. But we're first going to go down and up into the high fanes quarters and have a look at that because that's pretty much the best view uh, of the city itself, at least for from my perspective, for a military person or the leader of the city. So we'll head up these stairs to the high thanes quarters here of course he lives pretty good up here got a nice uh, nice room with a hearth and of course he has his own private viewing platform as well as a uh, a beacon and he gets to look down upon the city and see the the goings on uh, the high thane has a his own direct path as you can see up to the high road which travels up to the peak of the mountain and we'll be headed up there pretty soon but we're going to go back down to the uh, lower area you know we might go through see the high thane himself has a path that goes down like you see here along this like, little fortress area down to where the average soldier for the city might spend their time and then of course we're going to head down this path and head into the trade district or the upper trade district uh, there's a hot tub up here as well as a windmill and uh, these are the roofing areas of some of the trade district and of course as we come down we'll find ourselves in the the upper trade district where uh, trade skills can be worked on uh, again this came after miss land so some of the really cool trade uh, tables and smithing tables that are in the game now uh, aren't here so you know we do what we got to do i could probably tear some of this down but i feel like that would defeat it it looks good as it is this is like a nice little area for people to work and then we'll head down these stairs and we'll come into what I call the Battered Brand Arms and Armor store where you can purchase your weapons and your armor. Probably some of the best in the realm because it was made by dwarves. Uh-oh, we got ourselves 
a drake. We'll go ahead and kill him so he doesn't break anything. Um, that's one of the problems with doing mega builds is spawns are troublesome sometimes. Um, as long as I'm not there, they're not breaking anything. But the second I come into the area, they have a tendency to show up and try to break stuff. But of course, this is the uh, bank, bank vault. It is a dwarven city in the mountains. Of course, they would have a bank vault. And if they didn't have a bank vault, they would definitely, definitely have a brewery mountainous spirits and so we got ourselves a dwarven brewery here in the trade district not too far from the bank and not too far from the arms and armor and if we head down these stairs we will pop out of course in the uh, lower trade district we'll have a look at that real quick of course we've got the bottom bun a nice uh, bread dealer but there's the lower road again uh, in the lower city we'll head back up and we're going to head up to what is called the High Road, which is where there's more living space, uh, probably where the wealthier citizens of the city would live. But along that road, one second. <coughs> Excuse me. But we will go by the apothecary. Of course, every city has to have an apothecary, the highest potion. And of course, we're headed up into the High Road District, which encompasses most of the top of the mountain and uh, we'll have a couple of apartments here that you know people could live in wouldn't say that they're the biggest or best apartments I'd imagine that uh, I think of it as like where maybe the servants might take up residence for some of the people that live in the in the upper city but we'll come along the ridge of the mountain here into this first pavilion which gives us a nice and beautiful view of the plains leading down into the river valley below and of course the first two major residences here closer to the top of the mountain and we'll come down here it's this one that sits precariously out over the the edge of uh, the cliffs here but with a wonderful view of the city below of course you got sleeping and as well as well as food preparation and then we'll head back up and continue up the high road and along the top of the mountain to some more residences this is uh, one of my favorite it was a real difficult build but it was it was worth it in the end to be able to build a uh, two-story stone building that hung out off the top of a mountain uh, was a lot of fun uh, <laughs> it took a little a little bit of creativity and uh, work but we got it done it was not uh, exactly what i wanted in the end but it's what i got so that's how it works and we'll head up and of course you can see there's the high fangs uh, gate it appears that i had uh, a lighting fixture up here somewhere i'm gonna assume that a drake exploded it and it died and left behind its remains there so we will continue up to the next platform the upper platform before you get to the peak of the mountain it's also got a, a wonderful view uh, of the city and the forest below and uh, we'll just keep on heading up uh, a quick but a small little fortress area just before we reach the uh, top of the, the mountain here and of course we're gonna head up to the very peak where uh, a temple resides a religious site I suppose this is where I tend to get the most lag because I built something pretty interesting here at the uh, top of the mountain with this temple it is the spire of ice and fire you might know that as a Game of Thrones reference it was a it was an attempt to do something interesting with the uh, trophy system uh, it looks like we got ourselves a bad guy we'll kill him because we don't want him breaking things uh, but it was an interesting build. It didn't quite turn out exactly like I wanted. I think it looks pretty cool from the front, uh, but it's not exactly what I thought it was going to be, but I enjoy it. And it's here at the very peak of the mountain for you to walk up to. And it does give you a little bit of lag, so if you're not on the server like I am, it, it might take you a second to get up there. But we're going to head back down, and we're going to head down the other side of the high road along the the cliff's edge 
and uh, see the rest of the homes before we head back down to the lower city. Um, so here we go. This is uh, this was probably my favorite part of the build. It was suggested by my friend whose uh, name is down there on that uh, trading post to put in this really interesting battle turret. It was really fun to build and I think it turned out really good. I'm going to go into fly mode because I kind of want everybody to see the the amount of uh, detail that went into it. It was it was a lot of fun to build that. It was a pain, but the end result, I think, really came out beautifully. It, it looks good in the panoramic, and it looks good from here. Uh, it was a daunting task to undertake when I was building this city, but in the end, I think the payoff was worth it. So we're going to head down to uh, my friend Brad's house. This is the house he claimed for himself. And as such, it is the uh, free Plutonic Hug House. It's got a wonderful view of the city, overlooking all of Tiriskard and the forest beyond. He picked a really good house. I picked mine earlier when I was putting in apartments down below. And that's fine. So we're going to head down a little bit further along the cliff's edge. You can see the citadel there. And we're going to come to another one of these hanging houses here along the cliff. You can see it's got all the decorations and accommodations that a person would need. And we're going to keep going. I'm going to head over here to another house. This one's got an interesting door. I don't know exactly how I managed to get this gap so small, but it kind of paid off in the end when I realized that you could walk through those curtains like that. So. It's got its own sort of special door. And of course you can see here, this is that uh, entryway from the main citadel that you can take over here to the high, to the, to the high road. But we're going to keep heading down a little bit further. Let's come here and get a beautiful view of the forest below. And then head a little bit further along to another one of the houses that's available here. This house, uh, this house was a bigger pain than I thought it was going to be. It, it turned out all right. I tried to use the natural flow of the cliffside to build it. That did not work out quite exactly like I thought it would, so I had to do a little bit of mining. I try to do as little topographical changes to the world as I can, unless it's absolutely necessary. I think it makes the city look more natural and flow more naturally when you use the topography. But that's just me. I know a lot of builders love to make changes to the environment. And I do that too, but I do it as little as possible while I'm building. I try to use the natural world itself to the best of my ability. And of course, we've got another house here that sits just above the trading post. And a nice house that could accommodate two people and then of course we can continue on down and we will pop out right back in the lower city just as before and be able to traverse along the main wall here and have a look uh, it was a lot of fun to build this it it went through a couple of iterative changes over time but once I got the framework in place, it became a lot of fun to build. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed walking through it with me and listening to me talk about some of my favorite things that I did while I was doing it. This is probably the best time to tell you to like and subscribe, comment. Those things are really important to the algorithm apparently now. So I need to be a little more uh, aggressive with talking about it. But please do. If you want to see more content, uh, I have several other cities that I have been working on. This one is the first one to be uh, what I would call complete. Uh, I don't think I'm going to add any more to this city. I think this city is done as it is. Uh, and it is where it's at in the state that it's going to be at. And so we'll do another really nice beautiful panoramic of it right here just before sunset 
and you guys can have a look and then we're going to have a little bit of fun and what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the time of day to the middle of the night so you guys can have a good look at it while it's dark outside so you can see how the lighting effects often play off of the mountain itself which is really beautiful in its own right that main causeway going up to the city i think looks really good but that's just me maybe i'm biased i enjoy it because uh, eh, it is my build but i do mega builds in valheim entire cities and in this case i have decided to build an entire kingdom and i would like very much to share that kingdom with all of you and we'll head back to the crossroads which is between it's about the most equidistant space that i can think of in this on this continent between all the cities that i'm working on um, the next city i plan on putting the final touches on is balder rock which is a lord of the rings inspired Edoras build and then i've got some more touches that i need to put on lake town which is of course a uh hobbit inspired build it's, it's actually Lake Town from uh, The Hobbit. So I'll be, be starting Farsight and Springdale here pretty soon. Uh, Portsmouth as well as Gale Town are already underway. I have a couple of other cities that I've built on the other side of the world, which uh, we, may, we may do a tour of those. You guys let me know in the comments below if you would like to see do a walking tour of my other two complete cities that aren't part of this kingdom over here but anyway i've had fun today i hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, i'll see you next time this is ozzy grim with the gamers group